Dear black women, I don't know if you've heard the news, but apparently it's now a federal offense to be introverted. I know, right? Shocking. I'm obviously joking, but for my fellow introverts out there, it can definitely feel that way. Have you ever been told, when I first met you, I thought you were mean? Or, you know, you should really speak up more at work, even though it has nothing to do with your job title or performing it well. We as introverts, especially when it comes to black women, are made to feel bad about ourselves, but why is that? Why are we expected to walk into a room and instantly start performing? Is it because we're black? Is it because we're women? What is it? Well, today I'm gonna be exploring that. Now a little bit more about me. Hi, my name's Ariana and sometimes I say stuff. I've always been super introverted and can completely relate to the introverted black girl experience. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. I've always had trouble fitting into different spaces, school, work, etc., because I don't typically walk into a room and perform. I'm more so the type to sit back and observe and once I get comfortable is when I start to speak up. I've definitely heard my fair share of passive aggressive comments. So when I first met you, I thought you were gonna be mean or wow, you're actually a lot nicer than I thought you would be even though I had never even opened my mouth. I'm really not the person that's gonna walk into a room and be the center of attention. I'd probably be the opposite. Maybe the corner of attention, I don't know. Either way, I've been seeing a lot of videos recently online, mostly TikTok, about how a lot of black women are feeling like the experience of being a black introverted woman is really honestly terrible. I was super curious about why that is, so I took it upon myself to do a little bit of research. And what I found is a little bit concerning. Let's get into it. So let's start off by getting into a little bit of historical context. My first question was, why are black people expected to be loud and boisterous and the center of attention? Where did that come from? There's many reasons for this and a ton of nuance when it comes to this topic. But one thing that really stood out to me is how we've been portrayed in media over the past years. You beg it now? Oh, please do it. Please hit it. Please. I want to see you do it. The hell is wrong with you? Your underwear, your prophylactic if you think you need them and get your ass out And go where, Sharon? To hell! I have told you and told you that she can always tell a lady but the way that she eats in front of folks like a bird. For example, for example, <laughs> for example, the angry black woman stereotype. Black women are often portrayed as loud, overbearing, and overly opinionated in a lot of pieces of media. Carolyn West categorizes the angry black woman as a variation of the sapphire stereotype, or colloquially, sisters with attitude. She defines the pervasive sapphire slash angry black woman image as a template for portraying almost all black women as serving several purposes. Could this be a part of the reason why people expect us to be loud and boisterous when we walk into rooms? A lot of these stereotypes such as the Mammy, the Sapphire, the Jezebel, angry black woman, etc., have a huge impact on the way others view us. And this was really interesting to me because I'd heard of the angry black woman, the Jezebel, the Mammy, but I'd never heard of the Sapphire before. This term is associated with the most dominant portrayal of black women. According to this stereotype, black women are perceived as malicious, stubborn, and having an overall overbearing nature. This sapphire stereotype possesses a strong need to dominate and project her unhappiness on other people. It's very similar in a lot of ways to the angry black woman stereotype. Now, a lot of these stereotypes focus really heavily on us being very angry in our expression, but this just goes to show that in a lot of forms of media, black women have been expected to be overly expressive when they walk into rooms or when they're in spaces. And when you go against that norm of how you're expected to act, that can be a red flag to a lot of people, especially when it comes to very white dominated spaces or non-black spaces. A lot of these stereotypes that I mentioned go back into history over a hundred years plus, but in recent years, we've definitely seen, uh, I would say like a, 
a descendant of these stereotypes, and that would be the sassy black best friend trope. These movies or TV shows typically feature a white protagonist. They'd then have their sassy black bestie who's always there to support the main white character. They're always outspoken and bring comedic relief. TVTropes.org says, since the era of Jim Crow and the civil rights movement, black people were more visible and could be more outspoken to a point, particularly if they were female. To illustrate this, sassy mammy figures could scold the family they work for and playfully berate their employers. So the author could show that blacks were not being oppressed. And because of the feminism movement, this was especially the case for black women. Combine these and you get the sassy black woman. It started with the heroines of black exploitation movies like Coffee and Foxy Brown and continued into the 1980s. The issue with this trope is that it's been completely overdone and it's not a fair representation of how black women really are. We're not a monolith. I remember growing up and seeing those TV shows and movies where there's that sassy black character who's the best friend to the main white character and I didn't really think anything of it. But now that I'm doing a little bit more research about this and looking into it, I can definitely see how people that weren't raised around black people or didn't have any black friends can constantly see this media on their television and think that's how we're all supposed to act. No, you can't have actual nuance and personal interests. You're meant to bring comedic relief to the office. How dare you not perform and have a sassy comeback whenever your white coworker says that your hair reminds them of their old dirty jump ropes that have been sitting in their garage for five years. Now this issue isn't just a surface level thing. It's affecting black women in real ways. Amari Pollard of the Sufficiently Black podcast said, in my review, my boss told me I was doing a great job on my assignments, but that I should speak up more in social settings and that's how I would get a raise. I was confused because speaking up had nothing to do with the job I was, I was hired to do. So why would that determine if I should get a raise? The white woman I was hired with got the raise because she spoke up more, simply because she fit into the work environment as a white person who engaged in after work activities. I was in charge of 12 websites while she was in charge of two. She was not even doing half the work as me, but got the promotion. Black women shouldn't have to be extroverted to have a promotion. And if you go online, you'll find a plethora of accounts like this one. As someone who sets boundaries between my work life and my personal life, this is always the sticking point in my performance reviews. Like, Harami, you gotta talk more, you gotta speak up more. And it's funny because I always feel like I'm speaking up as much as I can, like as comfortably as I want to. And then I'll go into performance review and it's like, you too quiet. <laughs> like, what do y'all want me to do? Freestyle? I'm not about to sit here and talk when I have nothing to say. Whoever said black girls are not allowed to be introverts was not lying. We not allowed to just sit back and be cute and be cool. We gotta always wanna tell our business and kiki and ha ha and perform for y'all. People are extremely hard and mean on introverted black women because again we're not fitting the mold we're not fitting the stereotypes of how we should behave and how we should conduct ourselves bro why is she so quiet she thinks she's too good to talk to people she thinks she's too good for everybody hey what's wrong i'm just sitting here Dark skinned black girls can be introverted in peace because people swear you a stuck up bitch that thinks she better than everybody. Like, I can't just be shy. I am actually very funny and actually very, very nice, but I just do not know how to be funny when too many people um, are looking. So, it's crazy to think that you can lose out on jobs and opportunities simply because you're a bit more reserved and observant. Just because you're not the first to speak up when really it's not necessary, it's all a performance. A lot of times as introverts, we speak up when we feel we actually have something to say, not just for the sake of speaking. This conversation doesn't even touch on those that happen to be introverted and also neurodivergent, or those who are introverted because of being neurodivergent, either or. As of recent times, there has been more conversation in what that looks like in black women. But in the past, this conversation has been overwhelmingly a white young male issue. Trying to get people to understand introverted black women in itself is a task. 
but trying to get people to understand neurodivergent introverted black women is even more of a task. Nancy Doyle has an article in Forbes and she made a really great point about being a black neurodivergent woman. The more marginalized identities you hold, the less you have access to the privilege of unmasking. Put simply, the further your way of being is from a cis, white, heterosexual male, the less access you have to safely unmask. Because to unmask is to be one's true and authentic, neurodistinct self. Yet, we still live in a society dominated by standards of normal and appropriate that place blackness, queerness, and other marginalized identities as deficits and or threats. There is a safety requirement for unmasking the black neurodivergent people are not granted. Because once we unmask our neurodistinct behaviors, our blackness still remains. Look how she ate that. Look how she ate that. Now, if you don't fit into the identity of a introverted black woman or a introverted neurodivergent black woman, you may be saying, what's the big deal? Like, yeah, it sucks, but why does it really matter? Why should we care? What are the consequences of all this? Well, there's a ton, but a few stood out to me. Like I said before, if you go on TikTok right now and look up introverted black women, you'll see video after video of black women sharing how they lost out on job opportunities, on friendships, on relationships, on so many different areas of life simply because other people didn't understand them. They took their silence or reservedness as something negative, as being stuck up or thinking they were better than or just overall not qualified for the job. There's also a huge mental health aspect. According to the University of Northern Iowa, overall findings show that introverts are more vulnerable than extroverts to depression and decreased mental well-being. Introverts are more likely to be compliant and have lower self-esteem than extroverts, and they typically have less social support than extroverts as well. This combined with the plethora of other issues you have to deal with when it comes to being black and being a woman can have a huge impact on our mental health. As an introverted person, we oftentimes already have trouble connecting with people and finding people that understand how our brains work. Being able to be understood is extremely important because when you're going through those tough mental times, you need a, I don't know, a, what is it called? Like a village, I guess, or like a um, support group. You need support group or social circle that can help back you up and pick you up in those low times and if you're like me someone who struggles to make connections with people that can be really tough as an introvert myself it's hard when you're not understood by many people it, you take a little bit more time to open up than the average person and people would think it's the end of the world maybe maybe if people understood us a little bit more the amount of us that felt misunderstood or isolated would significantly increase I think it's extremely important for there to be a diverse representation of black women in media so that whenever someone like me does come into a space, people aren't caught off guard thinking that I'm stuck up or I don't want to be there. In recent years, there has been a bit more representation for introverted black women in media. For example, Issa Rae's Insecure. Oh, shawty, it's my birthday, but no one cares because I'm not having a party because I'm feeling sorry for my set. Hell. I wouldn't necessarily say that Issa Rae was introverted per se, but she had this awkward aura about her that was very different than how a lot of black women had been portrayed in media in the past. She made it cool to be not so suave and a little bit more quirky for lack of a better word. I loved that show because it was one of the first times I felt represented in media in this way. And guess what? The show was a hit. Issa Rae showed that when you show black women in a different light, in a very relatable, diverse way, it can still be a hit. We don't have to continue doing the same thing, throwing at the same characters, the same tropes over and over and over. Right now, for me, my form of representation has been coming from TikTok. I do have my issues with the app, but one thing about it is that like-minded people will find each other. There's so many communities of black women on the app that have found their tribe. 
the alt black girl, the earthy boho black girl, the awkward black girl, the introverted black girl, the emo black girl, so on. If you can think of it, it's probably on there. You would be surprised the impact that having representation and not feeling like an outlier or like there's something wrong with you can have on you. One thing I really want you to take away from this video is that if you see a black woman in a space that's a bit more reserved and only speaks up when she really has to or when she has something valuable to say or to add to the conversation, maybe, just maybe, she's not stuck up, she's not rude, maybe she's just introverted and that's okay. And if you happen to be that introverted black girl, there's nothing wrong with you. And if someone tries to make you feel bad about that, that's a them issue. I can't remember where I saw this quote somewhere on social media, but just remember that quiet confidence is still confidence and nobody can take that away from you. So that's the end of today's video. I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this topic. If you can relate or learn something new, please leave it in the comment section below. I do want to try to post one of these videos once a week about social topics or topics in general that I'm passionate about. This is my first video, so it would be super duper helpful if you could hit the subscribe button below and follow me on my social media accounts. So until next time, bye!